one day off for uh, teacher meetings, but um, that day I was actually sitting in class and a guy started talking about it, about September 11th, and said um, that the world should go ahead and take care of all Muslims and Arabs, just get rid of them and that would solve all of our problems. And so I turned to him and, I mean, he was a classmate, he wasn't really a friend, and I told him, well, you know that I'm both Muslim and Arab, and he said, well, then we should start with you. This is not the only example of an American citizen being harassed. Other American Muslims were accosted with denigrating statements such as, go back to where you came from. We don't want your kind here. Your religion teaches hate. You people only stand for jihad, holy war, and killing. Holy war? Killing? These concepts are not consistent with the teachings of Islam. And what does this term jihad mean anyway? Jihad has become a very popular term that has been used and abused. The term jihad has been used to mean something negative, that this term advocates warfare and the killing of non-Muslim people. The true definition of this term, however, is completely different. In the West, the concept of jihad has been seen as a violent uh, struggle uh, by Muslims against non-Muslims. Historically, the concept of jihad is not like that. Um, scholars would tell you that the term jihad comes from the word jihada, which means to exert an effort, an effort in the good and positive sense. Uh, uh, to be a good father, to be a good scholar, to be a hard-working individual, uh, to bring uh, food uh, for, for your family, to struggle also for justice in a just way. Jihad is a misunderstood uh, term, and most people refer to jihad as being holy war. But actually, jihad in Arabic literally means to exert oneself to struggle. Uh, within Islamic lifestyle, uh, jihad is a, a struggle to find peace. It is striving to, to, to rid oneself of evil. And so um, there's an internal jihad, there's an external jihad. Uh, Any time a Muslim is struggling against evil, and trying to establish peace and goodness in his life, then this is what jihad really means. There is no literal translation or no literal use of the word jihad to mean holy war that you'll find in any text of Islam. Scholars of Islam agree that jihad does not mean holy war. That notion is entirely alien to Islam, a religion that teaches compassion and treating others as you would wish to be treated. The holy war is an alien term in Islam. The holy war is a Christian concept. Uh, Muslims have never considered war holy. War is used, harb in the Arabic language, is used in the Quran in a negative term. Jihad is used in a positive term, but the actual word for war is not used in a positive term, nor is it used in a positive term in the Hadith. And, uh, or the prophetic traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So there's nothing holy about war. The translation often we hear of the word jihad as holy war is inaccurate. The word holy means muqaddas and war is harb. So two words, uh, harb muqaddasa, in equivalent of holy war, that phrase does not exist in the Quran, nor in the sayings of the Prophet, nor in the language of the Muslims. The, the very phrase holy war is not something that one could uh, say is specifically, you know, Quranic. And that certainly that's not what the term jihad means. But the idea of sacred struggle is certainly in Islam as it is in Judaism and as it is in Christianity. Every state, every political entity, every social entity has to have a mechanism 
by which it defends itself and by which it extends its influence in areas where it has to be extended. So the United States has an army, it has an air force, it has a navy. And we also in our country regard it to be one of the greatest things that you can do to lay down your life for your country. Islam does address situations in which Muslims might be faced with the possibility of war. Islam lays out very clear guidelines regarding warfare. Christians who did believe in war, they had just war theory, that what can we do, what can we not do when we fight? And Muslims are like this also. So there were rules of engagement. There were things that were allowed and things that were never allowed. One of the things that was required is that you protect civilians, that you protect innocent life, that you don't kill Jews, that you don't kill Christians, unless they are combatants, fighters, who are actually fighting against you on the battlefield. That you don't poison wells, that you don't poison water, that you don't burn cities. and. One of the reasons why Islam was so effective as a state was because it was generally very noble in the way that it fought its wars. And it honored civilian populations. It didn't burn the land. It didn't destroy farms. It didn't rape women. It, it didn't do the things that traditional armies often did. These guidelines serve to ensure that violence is not committed unjustly or indiscriminately. In fact, the purpose of these guidelines is to work to protect people against violence such as terrorism. Such guidelines are part of the framework of Islam that works to promote peace. This framework supports the deeper and more spiritual aspect of the religion, including the deeper meaning of the term jihad. The term refers to any struggle of the human existence. In Islamic tradition, to any word, there's three meanings. There's a linguistic meaning, just what it means in language, and then there's a legal meaning, and then there's a customary meaning. The term jihad has all three aspects. Linguistically, it means to struggle. It comes from a root word which means to struggle, jihad. And then you have the jihad, the struggle against the self. And then finally you have what's martial jihad, the physical struggle against an oppressor or against an invader to the country. The struggle against evil, the struggle to promote peace, this is the essence of Islam. I invite every American to study Islam for themselves. Most Americans, once they study it and see it, they will agree that Islam is a peaceful faith, is a great way of life, if people really know what it is. I think America and the Muslim world, Christians and Muslims, are at crossroads, and the relationship is in danger. Um, both Muslims and Christians have to work together. They have to utilize the values of love, compassion, and respect of one another to strengthen that bond. We must live up to the greatest Christian values, the greatest Jewish values, the greatest Muslim values, and we've got to put this world together. If we are to ask how to move forward in a post 9-11 world, we must start by better understanding Islam. The more we know about Islam, the less extremists are able to hijack this beautiful religion. The more we work together to promote mutual understanding and respect, the more we work against terrorism.